Hey guys, I had recorded uh, this video before I came out with a name for this series, and I kind of want to just explain what this series is about. Uh, what this series is going to be about is going to be general game tips. So I'm not really going to go into too much specifics on TOA or too much specifics on Arena or Guild Wars, uh, but I might encompass them from a broader aspect of the game. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is looking at more uh, topics that people don't really talk about or people don't even really know about or in the game. Uh, like, for example, in this video here, it's going to be about the cost of scaling up a monster via fusion. Uh, that's something that uh, everyone can get knowledge from. It's not just for, for the high-end player base, not for the low-end player base. Uh, it's something that's a lot more broader than that. Uh, so I'm not going to be going into details on, like, this is how you set a Guild Wars defense. This is how you set a uh, arena defense. Uh, there's plenty of channels out there that already do similar things. I always prefer Childish's Educate and Dominate or his Critical Thinking series. Um, where he just gets some of the best players uh, from the global side and on the Asia side, and sometimes Europe too. I think he's got all three of them on there now. Uh, and they give their opinions on what works in uh, their specific metas. So um, I'm not going to be doing that because that's already a great place to go learn all those things. If you guys are really, really interested in Guild Wars and Arena, you guys can always go check that out. But this is going to be from a much more broader scale uh, of different parts of the game that other people are overlooking or different parts that people just don't really think about. So uh, without further ado, let's get on to that video and I hope you guys enjoy. Hey guys, today I want to do a video on the cost of fusion skill ups. So uh, what that means is I'm going to go through and break down what the actual cost in crystals is and in your time it's going to take to fuse um, a uh, fusion monster for just skill ups. So some of us have those four star monsters. For example, Illusion, uh, my example of Figaro as well, uh, Faye, because they just added the Kung Fu Girls. Uh, who else do we got here? Uh, Beretta, where Beretta is, somewhere. Beretta, he is one as well. Tyron, who's not out right now, is another very popular one. Uh, I've got Soha here, uh, is who I'm doing currently. And that's it for monsters I have out. But all those monsters have counterparts that have a fusion monster. So, for example, for Soha, it is the Wind Ninetales. Uh, so, um, for her, uh, I'm fusing these uh, skill-ups because she just recently got a buff. I used her in Arena, and I'm trying to get that cleanse her third skill maxed out on damage at least. Uh, so, uh, as you can see here, I've got a bunch of Garudas, a bunch of High Elementals, a bunch of Amazons, and a bunch of Harpies. So, what I want to talk about today was how much it actually would have cost me if I was just using refreshes, just using crystals, to do all of these monsters. Now, this has been a project I've been working on for a long time, probably about two months um, for this video alone. So this is not the actual cost of crystals that I've spent, but it's probably pretty darn close. Um, I mean, over two months period of time, it, it doesn't take that long uh, to use up all these crystals. So the first thing I want to talk about was awakening these monsters. So obviously, we got to level them up to 4-star max level, which we'll talk about in a second. But uh, for awakening them, they do require quite a bit of essences. So uh, for the Wind Harpy, it's 15 Wind Essences and 10 Magic Mid Essences. Uh, for the Wind Amazon, it's the same thing. It's 15 and 10. Uh, for the Fire um, High Elemental, it is 15 and 10. So what that means is we need 30 uh, Magic Mids uh, per Fusion Monster. And then we also need 45 uh, elemental mids. So, for example, we need 15 5, uh, 15 5, 15 fire, and uh, 30 wind. So, um, while I was farming those, let me go ahead and show you. Oops, that's the wrong button. Storage. Uh, let me go ahead and show you what I have done as far as farming goes. Uh, so, as you can see, I did a lot of magic runs. Now, I spent all of my time in B7s because I'm able to do those runs the fastest. And uh, this is my results. Now, this isn't my actual speed time for Magic B7, but it is for a lot of people. So I thought I'd use a basic baseline time. Uh, so it'd make the math a little bit easier. Uh, and we can go from there. So as you can see, I've got 223 Magic Mids. I got 160 Fire Mids. And I got 181 Win, uh, win Mids. So all of those, you've got to do refreshes. Unless you do it over a long period of time in order to get uh, that number of Essences. So, for example, for my magics, um, I was running B7. I found, on average, it was six mids per refresh. So out of 80 energy, I found I was getting six mids per run. 
Sometimes it might only be one, sometimes it might be two, sometimes it could be four, sometimes it could be nine, sometimes it could be 12. I think 12 is the highest I got. Uh, but it all averaged out to six mids per refresh. All right, so if we just do a baseline time of 30 seconds per run, because that's pretty average for a lot of people, uh, it took us 15 runs per refresh. So we got 15 runs out of that 80 energy. And uh, so it's seven and a half minutes per refresh that it, it took us to complete that uh, 15 runs. And so on, we're averaging 1.15 minutes per mid. So that's not that quick. Um, and that averages out to about of just run time, about 34 minutes. That doesn't mean it took me 34 minutes to get just that alone. But uh, if we're going on averages here, uh, that's what it took of just running it. So you're not going to sit down in 30 minutes, get 30 uh, magic mids doing um, five refreshes because that's what it took. So uh, five refreshes because we're going for the 30 and we're getting six per run. So six times five is 30. So it's not too hard to get. Uh, so that costs us 150 crystals for one fusion monster. So it's just getting the magic mid essences. So those 30 magic mids cost us 150 crystals. All right. So right there, that's already a pretty good number to start with. Uh, but when I did these times, it, that's just from like start of the dungeon, end of the dungeon. Now, realistically, some people who are doing 15, 20 second runs like I'm doing, it could literally take us 30 seconds to hit accept the reward and click the next and keep going. So the time you got to remember is just game time. That's not the time it takes for you to collect the reward and start it again. So if it takes you 30 seconds, you got to add about 15 maybe seconds on, depending on how fast you could not be looking because you have to collect it. So that time frame can easily be bumped up. All right. So that's our magic mid essences. So we got 30. All right. We got those 30, took us 150 crystals to get those 30 magic mid essences. All right, now the elemental mid essences. All right, on average, again, I was running B7s. I was getting eight mids per refresh. And it's the same thing in the magic ones. Sometimes you get a lot more, sometimes you get a lot less. So on average, I was getting eight mids per refresh. Same time frame is 30 seconds per run. So we still get that same, because it costs the same amount of uh, energy. Is uh, the 15 runs in, seven and a half minutes per refresh. But... Um, the difference is, all right, we got to get 45, okay? But we're getting eight instead of six. So it only took us 56 seconds per minute. So it's only take us a little over 25 minutes of game time to get those 45 mid essences for me. But it also took an extra refresh because we got to get 45 instead of 30. So it's 180 crystals. Or again, we're just talking about one monster so far. So for one fusion, is that we've already up to 150, 180, so we're already up to 330 crystals just getting the magic mid essences. Okay, so just to awaken the monsters that we need, those three monsters, we're already up to 100, uh, th sorry, 100, 330 crystals. Now, the nice thing is, while we get those mids, we will easily get the awakening materials for the two star. So those two extra mids, we're just throwing those in that we're gonna get them anyways. Uh, and the low essences, we will definitely get those. We don't even have to calculate those in because if we do that much farming for those mids, we're guaranteed to get those lows. All right. Now, where do we farm? So, for example, I am doing the wind uh, nine tails. So if we go ahead and look at the wind nine tails, who is right here. All right. So we got our four monsters. We got wind harpy, wind amazon, fire elemental, and um, water gruda. So where can we find those monsters? Well, in Kabir Ruins, that's the only place we can get that Wind Harpy. Wind Harpy is not a secret dungeon, so she's only obtainable in Kabir Ruins. Okay? So we did some of our farming there. Now, uh, the uh, Fire High Elemental is only found in Vrofagus Ruins, so we did almost all of our farming here because those high, those high Elementals were eluding me like crazy. Now, I did all my math for Vrofagus Ruins because it also drops at Fire Werewolf, and most people who will be fusing for skill ups, I would assume, have illusion, and they're trying to skill up that fire joker, and that's where you get um, your fire werewolves is that um, Brophagus Ruins. So that's where we did a lot of our farming. Now, unfortunately, I am doing all of this farming for a monster that's not farmable. Now, we can get uh, Wind Amazons from the guild shop if we so wanted. So we could add in 800. Uh, guild war points 
to the get that wind amazon if we wanted to be farmable these again it's taken me about two three months over time to do this they obtain six because that's in that time of summoned to six wind amazons uh i'm not going to be spending my guild points on uh wind amazons anytime soon so this has all been done over an extended period of time in order to get that so Again, we're farming Vrophagus Ruins, which gives the same amount of experience as Tamor Desert and Hydeni Ruins. All right. So what we are going to do is I want to make sure that this shows up correctly. Is we are going to look at one farmer and three fodders for a two uh, experience booster. So we're using a booster here. So if you don't have a free booster, which I used all three boosters, so I didn't have to spend my boosters. That's, again, more crystals. Could be 100, could be 200 more crystals you could add to the end of this. Okay? So, for a two-star, to max level a two-star, it takes 10 runs. So, we got to do 10 runs right away. So, it's 50 energy we got to use just to max that two-star. And, again, that would be using three fires at the same time. So, like, for me, I could maybe run all my Garudas at the same time. So, I could run three Garudas, and it's going to take us 50 energy, and that's what we're going to get there. All right? So, for a three-star... In Vrophagus again, so if we're looking at it um, right here, let me see. All right, so Vrophagus is the middle one down there. So it's 9.95, so it means you got to do 10 runs to get the max amount of uh, experience. And then Vrophagus for 3-star is we got 23 runs because it's 22 and a little piece. So we've got to do all of that in order to get uh, what we need. So here we go right there. So 9.95 right there. So that's what it's going to take. And then 22.53. All right, so then we're going to scroll on down a little bit here. So for four stars for Vrofragus, it's 52.71. So that's 53 runs. So again, this is doing with a one farmer and three fodder. Okay, so with one farmer and three fodder, that is what it's going to take to get that um, up there. So that's 50 energy for the two star. And then 115 energy for three three stars. The problem is we need four three stars. So that is 230 energy we're going to have to use to get those four three stars up there. All right, now we gotta go to five, or sorry, not five star, we gotta go to four star. So that is 530 energy, because we got 265 for each one time we do it. So that's 265 and 265, so 530 to get to four star, okay? So that's a total of 810 energy that we're gonna need to use to get all of that experience and leveled up in order to get that um, uh, fusion material. So it's 810 energy, so it's 10.1 refreshes. So we're just going to round down to 10 because of the point 0.1. So that's 300, in, that's 300 crystals right there. So we just used 330 crystals to get the essences. Now we're going to use another 300 crystals to level the monsters themselves. All right. Now it's 162 runs total. So it's four hours, a little bit over four hours of run time, again, of just game time to get us that. Um, those four monsters to max level four star so again though this is using one farmer and three fodder if let's say you did one farmer three fodder for three of them and then you did one farmer and one fodder that's going to reduce your crystal cost again but since we were doing it this way that's just how i had the math done for myself is that is what is going to cost us which is quite a bit i mean that's that's a lot of that's a lot of um crystals already all right now for the monsters we could obtain, so again, I did, like, I think the only uh, fusion that doesn't have a secret dungeon monster in it, besides the Garuda, um, that's the other way to attain the monsters for free, is to do their secret dungeons. So their secret dungeons is four pieces per run. So for a three-star monster, it's 40, and it's five energy per run. So it's 50 energy per monster. So that could be 30 crystals right there. Again... I didn't have to do a secret dungeon. Again, if you summon the monster, you don't have to do a secret dungeon. Great. Um, makes it, again, less crystal cost. For the two-star monsters, uh, you need 20 uh, pieces, and they're only three energy a run. Still getting the four pieces. So it's only 15 energy per monster. So two-star is super easy to get. Um, I didn't even include the crystal cost at that at all because uh, my fusion itself that I'm getting doesn't have secret dungeon cost to it. But if it did... You might have to throw in like maybe 60, 70, not 60, 60 to 90 um, crystals to obtain your monsters from secret dungeons. Uh, so that can be a little bit added cost in there as well. All right. So now we are going to go over some of the totals. So for one fusion monster. So again, 
we are trying to fuse uh, this wind nine tails right here. So right off the bat, 100,000 mana. So we got to use 100,000 mana, so that's right off the bat. All right, so now if we go back and add up all those crystals we use to level the monster and awaken it, that's 630 crystals per fusion monster. So 630 crystals plus 100,000 mana to do one uh, fusion monster. Now, that does not mean it actually costs that much. Again, I'm not counting free energy at all. So any free energy you get, beautiful, makes it that much easier. Uh, I don't have the booster cost in that at all. But uh, also this, you could go in and be like, well, I already have 30 magic mids and I already have 30 of wind and I already have 15 of fire. I don't have to do any of that farming. Well, I just saved you 330 crystals right there. And you might only have to spend 300 crystals on leveling the monsters themselves. So again, that's just total overall cost is 630 crystals plus 100,000 mana per four star fusion monster. Okay, so let's take a look now at how much a Devilmon pack costs. So a Devilmon pack, uh, I grabbed the screenshot of the one from last month because it's not up yet, is $50. It comes three Devilmon, 750 crystals. Okay, now a regular, a regular pack of, um, let me pull it over here. So a regular pack of 50 crystals is 1,400 crystals. So with 1,400 crystals, that's minus 750. That's 650 crystals that are left. Okay. So if we divide that 650 by three, that means each Devilmon is worth 216 crystals. So basically 217. Because it's a little bit of there's a percentage after. So 217 crystals per Devilmon. All right. Versus 630 for fusing one. Now, the downside to this is you can only buy a Devilmon in $50 packs. So realistically, all three of them are worth $50. And the crystals are just kind of a bonus. But if we're going from pure crystal, what it costs and what you get from that pack, they cost about 217 crystals per devil mom. All right. So that's a, that's 40, or 413 crystals more to fuse than to use a devil mom. Now, again, I personally, as you can see, I'm fusing for skill ups. I'm going to save my devil mom for nat fives. So I just want to do the comparison there. I just thought I'd throw that out there. But I personally would not use a Devilmon, unless it's a Lucian, on a four-star I can fuse skill-ups for. Lucian, to me, is the only one I can fuse skill-ups for that's worth it to use Devilmon. Uh, or super early game, Beretta, if you have to. Um, but most of the time, fusions don't cost, don't cost actual money. So we can get crystals for free. And again, as I said, I've been doing this for two months. I didn't just sit here and spend all these crystals out. All right? So, um, it's two again, two hundred seventeen dollars about average for a devil mod. So we're spending a lot more crystals unless we already have the essences uh, on those monsters. But again, it's a free devil mod. We don't have to pay for it, and we only get one devil mod a week from the glory shop, and we only get um, uh, two from TOA if you can clear TOA hard seventy, or all the rest basically. Unless they give it away an event, you got to pay for it. So. It's a little different, but I want to say per crystal amount, a Devilmon is cheaper than doing a fusion skill up. But again, I'm going to fuse for skill ups, then spend Devilmons on monsters I can fuse for skill ups. Because just having that fusion available for a skill up makes that four star much more usable to myself because it gives me that option to max skill if I can get those uh, three star monsters. All right, so in total, 630 crystals per fusion monster. It takes about five hours per fusion monster. Okay, so per four star fusion monster, leveling, doing all of the essence grinding, everything else is going to take you about five hours to do all of that per fusion monster. All right, so for me, I've got six skill ups. So I have spent 30 hours of game time on, so it's over a day, on getting those six skill ups. All right. And if, I, again, if I spent all crystals, it would cost me 3,780 crystals for my six skill ups, which that's over $100 in Com to Us terms. So it cost me basically over $100 for six skill ups. Now, this is where, again, I was going to say it's a little bit different. So it costs us a little bit over $100 for six skill ups. The Devilmon packs only come in 50. So what that basically equates to is they almost even out. 
when you go total because you can only pay for the $50 pack of Devilmon. So yes, they give you those crystals, but you still have to spend $50 to get those three Devilmon. So again, for my turns, it's 370, 300, geez, I can't talk, 3,780 crystals for those six skill ups. So that'd be uh, cash up. Let's go over 3,200, or sorry, 3,000 is 100 uh, dollars. So we're talking $100 plus probably $30 to get the $750. That's what most packs are, $30, $750. So we're looking at a two, a hundred and basically $30 is what six skill-ups cost me. So again, I don't have to pay for those skill-ups though because I already got those Devilmon uh, because I can, I'm able to fuse them. So I think that gives a lot more value to those monsters than just pure crystal value. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and awaken all of these things, and I'll be back, and we'll see if my uh, Soha actually gets the scale-ups I want her to. All right, so here we are fusing our last Orang up, so our last win nine tails. All right, and then we'll get to go see if we get anything we need. All right, so there's our last one. So we've got six of these guys. So let's see what happens. Let's go find Soha on the list here. So we're going to go to Soha here. So we've got our six. I like to do one at a time just to see. Uh, I feel it gives me a better chance to get into that last skill, which obviously was not the case because I just went first skill first time. All right, so that's not what we needed. Let's see. Second skill. Okay, it's still not third skill. we still got four more chances, though. Come on, third skill. At least get that damage maxed. So there's cleanse. So there's another skill into that third skill. So that's good. We have three more to go. Come on. Keep going into cleanse. We got 33% chance. First skill again. Okay. Really, any of them are good, especially second and third skill. So there's, there's into the third skill again. Perfect. And we got our last skill up here. Well, let's see what it goes into, and Will the Wisp. So, let's go ahead and take a look at our Soha and see what it all went into here. Uh, so, we almost maxed out the first skill, so we got one more uh, harmful effect rate left to go there. We got two left to go in the third skill, and we did get all the damage up on the third skill. So, that's really what I wanted to have happen, was all the damage be up. Uh, so, we're only missing one more skill up there to get all of the damage up completely, uh, because all the damage went up in the first skill, almost all the damage went up in the second skill, uh, and then we got all the damage on third skill. So we still need one, two, three, four more skill ups. So, again, I'll, I still have the opportunity. Uh, if like, I summon one, like a Wind Nine Tails, I can just feed it into her. Or I can, as I keep getting Wind Amazons, I can then farm the rest of the units and I'm still able to skill her up. So, um, I just wanted to show uh, a video on what it actually costs to do all of that stuff for skill ups and what type of. Um, uh, what type of units you can skill up with. So like for Soha, for example, now we got that cleanse max. She's going to hit a little bit harder when she, I'm using her as my arena lead. Uh, so that's super beneficial to me. But she's not a monster I put so much value into that I'm going to be spending uh, on Devilmon on her. Another monster like that is uh, Messity. I had a bunch of those water mummies uh, from the secret dungeon they had a little bit before. I still had them kept. I was able to max scale my Messity. Uh, from uh, using skill ups like this, or fusing for skill ups. Figaro is the same thing. Those were mostly fused. Some of them are summoned, mostly fused. Lucian, again, I used quite a bit of Devilmon on Lucians, uh, both of them, unfortunately, now, now, but I didn't have any Nat 5s at the time, uh, and Lucian was my best attacker, so it wasn't a bad move. Uh, but uh, they were also have, uh, not on this one, but on my second one, probably about a quarter of his skill ups were from fusions. Uh, so, it to me, it was worth it uh, because I get all those skill ups without having to use my Devilmon. Because, as I'm sure you guys know, if you've been watching for a while, I've got a lot of Nat 5s now. Uh, so, I'm using all those Devils in the Nat 5s. So, if I have a Nat 4 that's got a fusion counterpart, I'm probably going to fuse for those skill ups. Uh, so, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Uh, but, thanks for watching. Uh, if you guys liked it, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.